By the end of this video, you guys are going to be able to fly through these quadratic inequalities. And in about 30 seconds, here's how this video is going to get you there. We're going to start off with this first quadratic inequality, and then we're going to do another example where we have to do a little more work to get your quadratic, but it really won't be that bad. But then this problem, the last problem that we're going to do, you're going to have to factor by grouping, and I'll show you how to do all of that with a inequality on top of that. And after we go through all of that, I'm going to give you a problem to try and answer in the comments. And by that point, it should honestly be breezy. And if you're looking for the notes for this video, and guys, guys, these aren't just any old notes. Um, these are printable notes. And if you want access to these printable notes, I have them linked right in the description. And by the way, I mean, they're free. Also in the description, I have an extra video linked where you and I will go through and solve 10 more of these quadratic inequalities. And so if you're looking for some more practice with this, especially if you have a quiz or a test coming up on this kind of stuff, then I highly recommend you check out that extra video that I have linked right in the description. Now for our first problem, we have the quadratic x squared minus 17 x plus 70 is less than zero. Now, quadratic inequalities start the same way as quadratic equations. We're going to be factoring this while we'll be finding the zeros, and then you'll see what the inequality stuff actually does. But again, we're going to start by factoring this. And we need two numbers that add to be negative 17 and multiply to be 70. So what are those two numbers going to be? Well, when I think of two numbers that multiply to be 70, the first thing that comes to mind is 10 and 7. And if we use negative 10 and negative 7, those two numbers will also add to be negative 17. So those are going to be my two factors, x minus 10 and x minus 7. And we have that that's less than 0. Now you've solved quadratics enough time to know that the zeros that we're going to end up getting here would be x equals 10 and x equals 7. And those numbers still matter here, but what we're going to do is we're going to put them on a number line. We have x equals 7 and x equals 10. And what we're looking for here, right, we're looking for where this quadratic is less than 0, not where it's equal to 0. Because if we plug in 10 or we plug in 7, that will make this quadratic equal to 0. Like, let's say we plugged in 7, we get 7 minus 7, and that's 0. So we get a 0 from that factor times whatever the heck this thing is when we plug in 7 for x and that would be equal to zero. But again, we're not asking where this quadratic is equal to zero, we're asking where it is less than zero. So seven and 10 are not going to be in our solution set here. So they're gonna get open circles. So that's really the first step to all this. The next step is going to be checking these three regions and seeing in these regions, is this quadratic going to be greater than zero or less than zero? Is it gonna be positive or is it going to be negative? So we'll check this region to start off with. And that region is any number that's less than seven. So let's pick a number that's less than seven. I think zero is, let's just make our lives easy here and pick zero. And let's plug zero into X here and see what happens. If we plug in a zero for X, we get zero minus 10 here, and that's negative 10. So off of the first factor, we get a negative number. If we plug a zero into the second factor here, we get zero minus seven, and that's negative seven, another negative number. And if you multiply a negative number by another negative number, you get a positive number. The next region is from seven to 10. So let's pick a number in between seven and 10. Let's pick eight. If we plug an eight in to our first factor, we're gonna get eight minus 10, which is negative two. That's a negative number. And if we plug eight into the second factor, we get eight minus seven. That's one, that's a positive number. And so we get a negative number times a positive number. That's a negative number. And lastly, we need to check the third region, so we pick a number that's greater than 10, let's pick 11, and plug that into our quadratic. 11 minus 10 is 1, that's a positive number. 11 minus 7 is 4, that's a positive number. And so we get a positive number times a positive number, that is a positive number. And so you see here, the only place where this quadratic is less than 0. That's going to be where it's negative, and that's right in between 7 and 10. So that's your answer written on a number line, but there's a few other ways your teacher can ask for the answer. So we got to go over that too. First, if we're talking about this region here, we can pay attention to the seven first. We know that X has to be greater than seven, but not only must X be greater than seven, X must also be less than 10. So what we write is X is greater than seven and X is less than 10. Those are our two conditions for us to actually be in the interval. So that's one way that you can see that answer written. Some teachers will also write that as X 
is in between 7 and 10. So that's a way that can be written. But the other common format that your teacher will ask for your answer in is in interval notation. So for interval notation, our interval is going from 7 to 10, so we're going to write 7 comma 10. And you can see we're not including our endpoints here. These are open circles. And so we're going to use parentheses. If we were including them, we'd be using brackets. And you'll see examples of that in the problems to come. But yeah, that's our answer in interval notation. So moving on to problem two. Now this quadratic does look pretty nasty. We've got stuff all over the place here. So we've got to do a little bit of simplifying before we can actually start factoring. First, we'll distribute through this x. We've got x times x, and that's x squared. x times 3 is a plus 3x, and that's going to be greater than or equal to negative 6x minus 20. And then for quadratics, we want everything on one side and a 0 on the other. So let's get that negative 6x minus 20 over to the left-hand side. And we can do that by adding the 6x over and adding the 20 over. So when we add the 6x and add the 20, what we're left with on the left-hand side is an x squared. We get 3x plus 6x, that's plus 9x, plus 20 is greater than or equal to 0. And now this is something that we can factor. So we want two numbers that add to be 9 and multiply to be 20. So let's write that in. And what two numbers will do that? Well, how about 4 and 5? So we can factor this as x plus 4 and x plus 5. And from these two factors, you know that x is going to be equal to negative 4 and x is equal to negative 5. Those are going to be our two zeros. And so what we do with those is we put them on a number line. Because that's where our quadratic is going to be equal to 0. And on a number line, the negative 4 would go here and negative 5 would go here. Make sure you don't switch these. Remember, 0 is over here, and so negative 4 would come first, and then it would be negative 5. So before we talk about all the three regions and the shading and stuff, we need to figure out whether we're going to put an open circle on these endpoints or a closed circle. And look at the inequality here. That will tell you all that you need to know. Here, we're looking where this quadratic is greater than 0, but we also care where it's equal to 0. It's greater than or equal to. And we know the quadratic is going to be equal to zero at our zeros, right? That's why we call them zeros. And so negative five and negative four are included this time. And so we use closed circles. And now we can start testing points in our three regions. Looking at the first region here, that's anything less than negative five. So let's pick a number less than negative five. We'll go negative six. Let's plug that in for our quadratic. In our first factor, if we plug in negative 6, we get negative 6 plus 4. That is negative 2. That's a negative number. And plugging into our second factor, we get negative 6 plus 5. That is another negative number. So we get a negative number times a negative number. That's a positive number. And now we can move on to our second region. We need a number in between negative 5 and negative 4. That's not going to be anything too nice, but I guess we can go with negative 4.5. And if we plug in negative 4.5 for x into the first factor, we get negative 4.5 plus 4. That's going to be a negative number. And plugging negative 4.5 into the second factor, we have negative 4.5 plus 5, and that's a positive number. So we get a negative number times a positive number, and that's a negative number. And then lastly, let's pick a number greater than negative 4. Let's go with 0. We get 0 plus 4 here. That's positive. 0 plus 5 is positive. And so we get positive times positive, which is positive. And so now what we're doing, we've already taken care of the equals part, but now we're looking at the greater part. Where is this quadratic going to be greater than 0? Well, it'll be greater than 0 when it is positive, right? Anything positive is greater than 0. And so we're going to shade for all these positive spots. And that's going to give us our answer on a number line. Now, how else you can see your answer written is we can look at this first region here. And those are going to be all the x's that are less than or equal to negative 5. So that's one place where x can end up. Or you could have x in the second region over here. And those are all the x's that are greater than or equal to negative 4. And so that's one way that you can write that answer. You can also write it with interval notation. This first region here is from negative infinity to negative 5. 
With infinities, we always use parentheses with interval notation. But with these endpoints here, negative five and negative four, we are including them, and so we use brackets. So negative infinity to negative five and negative four to infinity will be our two intervals. And remember, negative four, we use a bracket for that because we're including it. Infinity, we use a parentheses. And to say that we're talking about both of these intervals, we use a little union sign in here. And that's going to be your answer written in interval notation. And moving on to our last problem for this video, this one's going to get a little bit tougher because now all of a sudden you have the x squared that's not by itself, it's got that 2 on it. But we've got to get everything to one side and have a 0 on the other. So let's subtract 5x on both sides and add 2. When we do that, we get 2x squared minus 5x plus 2 is less than or equal to 0. And from here, what we're going to look to do is factor. Because if we factor, it'll make the algebra a lot nicer for us in the end when we're testing all those points. So remember how we factor by grouping here. We're still looking for two numbers that add to be negative 5. But instead of finding two numbers that multiply to be 2 here, we're finding two numbers that multiply to be 2 times that number on x squared as well. So it's 2 times 2, and that's 4. So what are two numbers that add to be negative 5 and multiply to be 4? Well, how about negative 4 and negative 1? So those numbers, they're not going to be our factors here. They're going to be how we break up the negative 5x. So we're going to write this as 2x squared minus 4x minus 1x plus 2 is less than or equal to 0. So you can see how we broke that negative 5x up into this based on the two numbers that we found. So from here, I've divided up our two separate groups and we wanna see what we can take out of each group. In the first group, they're both multiples of two and they both have an x. So we're going to take out a two x. And factoring out a two x means we divide each of these terms by two x. If you divide two x squared by two x, you're only gonna be left with an x. And dividing negative four x by two x you'll get negative two. So that's your first group done. Now what about the second group? Well, there's really nothing that they have in common, but if you leave it as a negative x plus two, you can see we have a little bit of an issue, right? Because what we're trying to do with factoring by grouping is we wanna take out this x minus two from each of them. But well, the second one doesn't have an x minus two, it's got that x minus two backwards, it's got negative x plus two. And so what we can do to fix that is factor out a negative factor out a negative one that is. And if we factor out a negative one, that means we're dividing each of these terms by a negative one. And doing that to negative x, we get a positive x. And doing that to positive two, we get a negative two. And so now we get that x minus two that we want. So now we're trying to look at what do these two groups have in common? They both have an x minus two. So we can factor that out. If you take away an x minus two from the first group, you're left with two x and take that away from the second group and you're left with a negative one. That's why I kept that negative one out there. I think it makes it easier to see rather than just having the negative and no one there. So from here, you can see what our zeros are going to be. First off from the x minus two, we get x equals two. And if you're having trouble seeing the two x minus one, no worries. Let two x minus one equal zero and just solve for x. We can add one on both sides getting 2x is equal to one, and divide by two to get x is equal to one half. And that's your other point. So we put those on a number line. We have one half and two. And now before we focus on our three regions, let's see if we're gonna have open circles or closed circles on those points. And all we have to do to do that is look at this inequality. One half and two are where this quadratic is equal to zero. So does this inequality say that we care about where this quadratic equals zero? Well, yes, because it's less than or equal to zero. If it was just a less than or if it was a greater than, we wouldn't care about where it equals zero. And so we would use open circles. Here we care and we use closed circles. So we've got that and now let's focus on our three regions. We'll pick a number that's less than one half to start off with and we can go with zero. Plugging a zero in to the first factor, we get zero minus two, that's a negative number. 
plugging a zero into the second factor, we get two times zero, which is zero, minus one, that's a negative number. So we get a negative times a negative, that is a positive. And now we move on to our second region. For a second region, what's the number in between one half and two? Let's go with one. One minus two is a negative number. And then two times one is two, minus one is one, so that's a positive number. Negative times positive is negative. And lastly, number greater than two, we're gonna go with three. Three minus two, positive. Two times three is six, minus one is five, that's positive. Positive times positive is a positive. So now we can look to where we're going to shade. We care about where this quadratic is, yes, equal to zero, that's what the dots were about, but we also care about where it's less than zero, and that's going to be where it's negative. So that's gonna be in this region here, in between one half and two. And how else we can write that answer is, well, that's gonna be where x is greater than or equal to one half, and also the other condition is that x has to be less than or equal to two. So that's one way we can write it. Also, we can write it in interval notation. The interval goes from one half to two, and we include both endpoints, so we can use brackets. And so that's your answer in interval notation, and that is it for the last problem on quadratic inequalities. So hopefully this has got you feeling much better with quadratic inequalities, and if you're feeling pretty good with this, then here's a problem for you to try and answer in the comments. Here I have x squared plus 3x plus 2 is greater than or equal to 0, and I know you can't put a number line in the comments, so just put your answer in interval notation, and I promise this is a pretty quick problem. So try this out, let me know what your answer is in the comments, and if you have any questions on anything we talked about in this video, again, let me know in the comments, and I'll try to get back to you when I can. Now remember, I do have that extra video linked in the description where you and I will go through and solve 10 more of these quadratic inequalities. And so if you're looking for some more practice with this, especially if you have a quiz or a test coming up on this kind of stuff, then I highly recommend you check out that extra video in the description. Lastly, make sure you guys are subscribed to the YouTube channel. I mean, we're getting closer to 100K by the day. I mean, it's, it's a crazy number to think about hitting. And so I really appreciate all your guys' support so far. It really helps me just mentally getting out these videos and all that, all the thank yous you guys give me and comments and, and all that stuff. So anyways, so thank you for that. And that's going to do it for this video. So I'll see you soon.